Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to create a shaker cake topper but I'm also going to do offset layers as well. So we're going to start in design space. Now I have done a more detailed video on creating offset from text, JPEG and PNG images and I'll link to that in the description below. I'm just going to do a very quick one today for this. So I'm in Inkscape, I'm going to do my text first, so I'm going to get text box and of course I can go through and change my fonts. Now everything you do wants to be within this rectangle, so I'm going to zoom in by going to view and zoom. And then I can write my text. If I click my solid cursor, it will then appear with a box around it and these arrows. If I hold down my control key whilst I select one of those arrows, I can make this bigger or smaller, but because I'm holding the control key down, I'm keeping it in perfect proportion. I'm going to go to path, object to path. And then I'm going to go object, ungroup. So I want to move this a bit closer. So I'm just going to use the arrow key on my keyboard. And then these I'm going to move closer. And the L I want to move just a little bit closer like so. And the E just a tiny bit closer. And then if I draw around the loo, you see that all three letters are showing. So I can then again move them in one go. Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to draw around all of them. And you'll know they're selected because you'll have these broken boxes going around each letter. I'm going to go path and union. And union in Inkscape is like weld in design space. Nice and easy, I can now create my offset. So I'm going to go path, linked offset, and you'll see a little diamond appears. I'm going to choose my colour, and then I'm going to hold down my control key, and I'm going to select my curved closed bracket. So it's normally zero on your keyboard. And equally, if I want to reduce my offset, it's normally nine on your keyboard, which is the open curved bracket but you must make sure you hold down your control key. So I've got my black layer selected, so I'm just going to move that down out the way. Now I've got a choice with this. These are all pretty much separate. So whatever I do with them, I am going to have to glue them probably to the next layer, unless I was using a vinyl. I can, if I want to, come up to path and break apart but actually all that's going to cover up is the, the cutouts from the letters and I want to keep them so if I was going to do that I'd go path break apart and then path union but I want to actually leave them as they are so I'm simply going to go path union and then I can go path linked offset that diamond will appear I can change the colour and then again hold down my control and as I say it's normally zero on your keyboard but it's the close curved bracket. Again if I move that pink down, I've got a choice again to make here. Do I want those to be cut out or do I want those to be solid and I think actually on this one I'm going to go solid. So I'm going to draw around it, I'm going to go path break apart, path, union, and then path, linked offset, I can choose another colour, and then hold down my control, and zero, or the closed curved bracket. Let's move that blue layer down. 
Again, I've got a choice to make, so I'm going to go path. I think we will do break apart on that, so it's solid. And then path union. And if I want to do another offset layer, I can. So I'm going to linked offset. And let's do a red. And zero or closed curve bracket. And then because it's selected nice and easy, all I'm going to do is path and union. I can draw around both layers and then move them at the same time. And then there we go. We've got our offset and I can then go file, save as. You'll see it should automatically go to save in your pictures and it should want to save as an Inkscape SVG. So very quickly, I'll go over a PNG again. So I have got a PNG from a site. Now I must stress this is personal use only. We all know that personal use is not a get out of jail free card. There are risks that come with it. Most companies are okay at kind of ignoring it a little bit as long as you're not taking the mick but it must be personal use i must stress once again that does not come risk free personal use is not a risk free reason but most companies are okay with fan art so this is for my granddaughter's third birthday so completely personal use as is everything i do on this channel so this is a PNG that I've got. So I'm going to select OK and open. And again, I want to reduce her down because she does take up the whole of this space. So hold down my control key and then reduce her down to keep her in proportion. I'm then going to go path, object to path, and then path, trace bitmap. Now PNG and JPEG is different in the way that you do this and as I say in my previous video I have gone through this and I will link it in the description below. So if you want to really get into this with Inkscape I do a few different ways of doing it and I show you PNG and JPEG but I just wanted to do a quick refresh today. So for PNG I'm going all the way up to one on the brightness threshold and then I'm reducing it by one click to 0.990. You can select the update just to see what it's going to look like and then OK. And we've got our original image and then our copy image. Now this is a direct copy of this. So it's the same size and everything. Now you can keep this in here and you can bring it into the box, but when you save it, you export it and you save it and you bring it into design space, because this is a PNG, it will not come in with the offset because it's not formatted to do so. So regardless of whether it's a JPEG or a PNG, the original image you must bring in separately to design space if you're going to do a print and cut. So I'm just going to delete that because we don't need it for the moment. So now we can create our offset. So I'm going to go path and union and then path linked offset. That diamond will appear. I'm going to change the color and then hold down my control key and zero or the curved closed bracket. Now, if I want to do break apart to cover that up, I can, but actually I want to leave that as a cutout. So all I'm going to do is path and union. So now we can do an offset of this one. So again, we've already done path union. So we're going to go path, linked offset, change the color, control and zero or closed curved bracket. So again, we can choose to go path and then break apart to make that solid and then path union. Or if we want to keep that cut out, we simply go path union. And then we can create another offset. So go path, linked offset, the diamond will appear. We can choose the color and then control 
and zero or closed curved bracket. Now this time it's covered up that cutout so there's nothing to break apart there because this is now a solid image on the orange layer which is the layer selected. So I can go path, union. And then let's do one more, let's go path, linked offset, and then control and zero. Now this time we've got this cutout here. So again, you can choose, you can simply go path, union, making sure that the correct layer is selected, or you can go path, break apart to make it solid, and then path, union. Make sure it's in this rectangle and I always just like to draw around and make sure that all the layers are selected and then file, save as and again it should want to save in your pictures as an Inkscape SVG and we're just going to do aerial offset and save. We can then go into design space. And again, just a quick recap on before, if we go upload image and browse, we can bring in our first SVG. And of course you can give it a name and a tag and then save. We can go get the image SVG. And again, give it a name and a tag and then save. And then we need to bring in the actual PNG as our print and cut. So I'm going to do complex and then continue. The background's already removed because it's a PNG. So continue and then save as a print and cut and save. So you can see here, I've got all my layers and I've already sized them up. So I know exactly how they're going to go on my shaker topper. So I've got my print and cut images and then all of those layers behind each image is going to be a card cutout. And the same with the name and the number. They're a card cutout on the red, the blue and the pink layer, but the black layer, so the Elsie Lou and the three are actually going to be vinyl. So for my actual cake topper, I've just been really simple with this and gone for a circle, but you can go with other shapes as well. And I've created my circle eight inches. And then I've done a cutout of 6.5. So I've made it a cutout circle. So let's look at my actual shaker cake topper. So this purple circle, which is eight inches, is the back of my topper and it's going to be in a glitter card stock. So the back will be a glitter and then the inside will be the white of the cardstock. I've then got a white circle, which is 7.8 inches. So I've made it slightly smaller than this. And then I've got this bluey purple cutout circle, which is eight inches. Now this white is my acetate. So I'm gonna have a sheet of acetate and on top of it, I'm going to glue my chipboard circle. So I'm going to cut this out in chipboard and the white will be acetate. I will then have another chipboard circle. And on top of that will be a layer of acetate. Once these have both dried, I'm going to add glitter and sequins and whatever else into here and then I'm going to glue my other piece of chipboard with the acetate already glued on it on top of there, sealing in all of that glitter and sequins and whatever else I've put in there. I'm then going to glue my back piece of cardstock on there like so. And then I've got my other piece of cardstock, which will probably be a glitter cardstock, and that's going to then be glued on top there. Once that's all dry, I can then come in and I can glue all of my layered cardstock pieces together and add the print and cut, and I can then place them 
onto my shaker wherever I may want and then it's just a case of adding my sticks on so that is how you can create your shaker and you don't have to do offset images like I have if you just want to do a very simple shaker with some vinyl on it or a couple of print and cut images you absolutely can but all it is is circles or stars or whatever shape you're working with now I choose to have chipboard in between my acetate pieces because that's four millimeters of space for my sequins and my glitter but of course you can use foam uh, you could use layered craft board whatever you've got you can make it work but you do want a good amount of gap between your two layers of acetate so that your sequins and everything can actually move about we can then go to make it and we can start cutting everything out
start cutting everything out. How cute is this shaker topper? I absolutely love it and I could make these all day long. They're so fun to make. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe, hit that notification bell and give a like. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the comments below. And don't forget in our group, UK Cricket Creators, you don't need to be in the UK, but you do need to love your cricket to join. We do free events every month. We do about eight a month. We put the schedule up the month before in the group. We let you know what we're going to make and what items you're going to need. And then we all get together, we talk, we chat, we create, we learn, we all look at what each other's made and it's just a good few fun hours. They're normally between two and three hours long. You come and you learn lots and also it gets us all interacting at a time when we're not interacting at our most and it's in the safety of our own craft room. So if you want to come and join in some of those events and see if you can book a free space, then come and join us. Otherwise, I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.